What's up guys? Today we'll be taking a look at the brand new Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5, of course the fifth in the series. The original four were video game masterpieces for their time and one of my favorite series of games to be honest. So I grew up with Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 so I had a good amount of reasons to be excited for this and unfortunately in many different ways it has let me down. Um, the game sort of tries to update the wrong things but leaves the outdated things in. <laughs> in a short sense, but we're gonna be getting, going over the game for the most part, and we'll see what's wrong with it and what's right with it. So first off, it is similar to the other Tony Hawk Pro Skater games where there is no story, the gameplay is the prize here. You know, there's no end goal, there's no like major, you know, plot point, it's go out, skate, have fun. That is the idea of Tony Hawk Pro Skater, and THPS 5 tries to relive that, but messes up in many different ways. Now, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5 is all about playing online with your friends, and because of that, we're specifically going to be playing offline mode, because honestly, the forced online capabilities make this game more of a hassle. Not only that, but unless you completely sign out of PSN and turn off your internet for your PS4, it basically forces you to play with people. So why don't we head into the first level to give you an idea? of how the game plays. All right then, so you can see my pretty cool holographic character here, which I like a lot. Um, The game, when it comes to controls, controls exactly the same way the other Tony Hawk games do, which is a good thing. It's it's supposed to be fun, pick up and play. It takes a little bit of learning to do, but after you, you know, learn that little bit, it becomes really native, and it's easy to pick up. It's nice and fun. I find myself falling a lot personally, but that may just be my own problem with it, but. Overall, the controls aren't bad. Like, I don't... Well, there's me fall. They did add a new control scheme where if you press triangle, you slam downwards, and of course that is the grind button. So, you're supposed to be slamming down on the grinding. And it's interesting, it's a little different, and I'm not really sure how I like the change. But overall, the controls are mostly the same. Where things get different is how you progress through the game. Of course, like any other Tony Hawk game, you unlock different levels by doing different missions, and you do missions differently here. Usually, in other Tony Hawk games, the missions just existed in the environment. You would just, you know, press start and you'd be able to see the different missions. Of course, you still have skate, DVD, combo, and VHSs, but, you know, there'd be something like, oh, grind on that dude's head, and that'll be a mission, and you didn't have to go to a checkpoint and activate this mission. It was just already there in the environment, but that's not the case for um, the fifth game here. We have to go to a checkpoint like this, hold square, and then eventually, wait, if I'm close enough, I guess we're not close enough, um, we can choose a mission, any one we want, and then we just choose it, play single player, and then boom, we're into the mission. And for this one, we need to perform the tricks that Tony says. So this one's sort of like um, Simon Says, but with Tony, so. Let's see how this goes. Um, all right, so we gotta basically just do what he says and not what <laughs> the not Tony says, which is just, just like, you know, do this and it won't. You guys will get the idea. Whoops, oh, oh, dang it. I will give it one thing, the crashes are hilarious. But one thing is like, okay, to explain and elaborate a bit more on what I was saying earlier about how the online mode ruins this game. Okay, there were four incredibly successful Tony Hawk games that did not need online. So why is it forced here? It isn't needed, you know? Plain and simple, it isn't needed. Not only that, but okay, we just joined the mission. We went up to the checkpoint, press square, and joined the mission. It isn't that easy online. Online, you have to hold square, choose your mission, wait for a loading screen, join the mission, do the mission, wait for another loading screen. It literally adds like three or four minutes to the entire experience of doing a mission. And it's tedious and annoying and you have to do it for every single mission. And it's like, what the heck? So it's like, if you are signed on, luckily you still get the option of doing a private match. That way, if you don't wanna play with people, you don't have to. But if you do a mission in private mode, it still gives you loading screens as if you were playing online and once you come back to the lobby, after doing that mission, you will be suddenly loaded into the online, which you never wanted to be in for the first place. So to actually get a true offline experience in Tony Hawk, you have to sign out of your PSN completely. That's annoying and frustrating, and I just can't begin to explain how much it annoys me. But beyond that, you know, that's how you progress through the game, is that you do these missions and doing 15 Getting 15 stars from doing missions will unlock you the next course. 
And unfortunately, so far, I haven't been incredibly impressed with the courses. The courses have been a little meh. You know, one thing that I loved about, I, I mean, okay. This is the manual I'm doing. I just did, <laughs> okay. But like, one of the things that Tony Hawk was so awesome about was its environments. You had this crazy, unique looking place to explore that had tons of secrets and was filled with life and interestingness. You know, even though it was about skateboarding. And here it feels like some of that soul is really, really lost. You know, you get, you know, the skate parks and stuff, but like, you don't get the secret areas. Like, I mean, look at the first level of Tony Hawk 1. You know, it's very similar in aesthetic. It's a closed in skate park. But you know what you have? You have a stinking helicopter you can kickflip on and it'll explode and open up a secret area. You don't have any secret areas in this game. I've played the first three levels of the game, which took me like three hours to unlock. And it's like, I haven't found a single secret area or anything that rewards me for exploring. It's all been about the missions and it's just been bland, to be honest. You know, it's been really, really bland. And it just, I mean, it's like, I want it to be interesting so badly because I love Tony Hawk games. So it's like, I was just, all I wanted was more of the same. That's all I wanted at the end of the day was more of what we had. And we, and it feels like they are forcing things that, you know, shouldn't have been there in the first place. The online mode, just some of this capabilities, just, it didn't need to be there. So we're gonna show off the player created levels now. They actually have some good categorization if you're looking for something specific. I wish they certainly just had a search button, but they don't, you can just, you know, search by these tags. So we can do like a fun level, look through, see what looks good. I have played a few out of these. Um, you know, these usually just, you know, borrow the assets of different levels. You know, like these are, you know, different atmospheres. Like there's a space level and there's, you know, a indoor level that you can just use and then you put your pieces inside of it. But either way, we're gonna be doing this one because this one actually looks pretty cool. So let's give it a shot. So this one is called UFO Invasion. So I expressed earlier how um, I usually play this game offline, but obviously to actually play any of these levels, we have to play them online. There's no like exclusive experience with these online levels. So if I want to play them, I have to be okay with random people hopping in. When it comes to ran you know online people, uh, they don't really have any experience or impact on your gameplay besides just also being there. You can run right into them. Nothing really happens except for it obnoxiously displaying it on screen. And to be honest, that's my least favorite feature of the entire game. When anybody joins who saw it earlier, I'll probably post a screenshot of it again. Look at how huge that text is. When there's, you know, a more popular level where there's like, you know, five people in and out every two minutes or so, it gets so annoying. Like, I can't even explain like, oh, I hate it. I'm sorry, but it's just, it is like the most annoying thing. Anyways, so this level seems pretty interesting. As a user creator level, I like its pizzazz. Can we go in there? Oh, it'd be cool if we could, but um, I don't see any way in not looking like it. Okay, but I see why it's a UFO invasion. It has like these UFO looking things up here And I'm guessing we could probably find our way up there. Yeah, well that guy just fell down there <laughs> So yeah, it's like I don't know It's like I feel like these levels have a little bit more pizzazz and vibe than the actual game levels I don't know what's going on there. Hmm But don't get me wrong about the online experience I think playing a game like Tony Hawk Pro Skater could be cool online But the fact that it is so forced into the experience shows that it really doesn't belong there. It should be something incredibly optional, but in fact, it's the opposite, and I feel like that's the big issue with it. I would, I did wanna approach the graphics. A lot of people have been judging this game because of its poor graphic style, and while I partly agree, if you're all about the graphics, I don't think this game was you know, made for you in the first place. And secondly, it's sort of you know agreeable at the same time. I've noticed a lot of different instances where frame drops. At first, I thought it was because I was playing online, but then I started playing completely offline and I still got a few frame drops, which was annoying. I'm on the PlayStation 4. This game really shouldn't have any frame drops whatsoever. It is launch week, so maybe there's still some issues they need to clean up, but beyond that, I really have no idea. So right now, I'm gonna be checking out how Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5 handles a customized skater ability because this is actually one of my favorite features of the Tony Hawk games. I used to spend hours making funny and cool looking characters and of course trying to unlock the wacky characters that this game provides, um, you know, this series. And while this game does have, you know, of course it's huge selection of professional skaters, it doesn't have too many wacky skaters. It has uh, this guy, which is, this guy's from the new King's Quest game and then it has, I think his name's Wheezy. I forget, but you know, you can choose like 
different style, I think. Oh, it's a little Wayne. Okay. But, um, regardless, it's just, like, it's interesting. So, like, say I want to make a character, you know, I can choose this, you know, I can choose Tony Hawk. So, it's, like, awesome. And if I keep on doing those missions, I get stat points, which I can, you know, put into these stats. You know, I can be really stinking fast if I want. And then you can go in here, and this is where things get bad. I hate this so much. Before, you know, you'd be able to completely customize everything, but now you have a baseline, you know? You have, you know... Like, we can go and choose our head here. And the head is not only going to choose the head, but the skin tone and the color of, you know, your hair and all that kind of stuff and the facial hair. You don't get to choose that here. You get to choose presets. And you can mix and match the presets, but it's still a preset. And that stinks. It's horrible. I hate it. And it's just like, ugh. You can choose customized boards. And it's like, even the customizability for the boards has been dumbed down. You used to be able to change the color of the trucks and the wheels and even the tape on the top. It's just like... It was all removed and dumbed down for no reason. I mean, it's like even the presets can be a little, you know, lame. It's like Ranger is obviously just a reskin of the security. And it's like there's other reskins that I've yet to unlock. Like this is, you know, the same exact thing. Probably like a different type of park ranger. And it's like there's like three different robots. And like you see this guy right here is going to be right over here again. It's just like could they really lack that much creativity or just like diversified? It's like... I can understand if you want to offer different colored versions, but condense it into one. Don't be, like, toting all of this customizability. Or, you know, like, let me customize it. Why can't I make his shirt green and his pants blue? You know, it's like, why I should be able to have that ability? Especially with the online mode. You know, it's like the online mode gives us more creativity than ever to show off our wacky stuff, and we don't get that opportunity. And it's... In my opinion, really, really frustrating. You also get to, you know, change emblems. You know, I think these just sort of affect different, um... I really don't know. <laughs> I think you'll just see them more often, and then you get to see stats for your character. And that's where things get annoying, too. I mean, I guess it's sort of arguable, but either way, it's like, okay, you have a really awesome character here, but you don't want to look like this character anymore. In fact, you want to look like a pro. So what if I wanted to look like the King's Quest guy, but have all my old stats? That's too bad, because you can't do that. You just... Like, this is a different character, and he will have different stats, so will this guy, and this guy, and this guy, so you don't really get that benefit of the doubt. But with that being said, that's just about all Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5 really has to offer. Of course, there are the skater bios, which are, you know, just skate videos. I actually thought these were pretty cool when I was a kid, and they really aren't bad nowadays, but it's just, I'm not really interested in checking them out. And besides that, you know, it would have been awesome to see an extras section. Like, wouldn't that have been great? Because I know, you know, cheat codes in old Tony Hawk games used to be the bomb. I love those, you know, doing some of the crazy different cheat codes you could find. But here you don't really get that opportunity because there's no cheat codes. So, <laughs> at the end of the day, they modernized the wrong things and left in, once again, the wrong things. They tried to fix what wasn't broken and then added their own tidbits that ended up being horrible. I wanted this to be good. I really, really did. But at the end of the day, it isn't. Um, if... You go into this game never playing a Tony Hawk game, you might like it. You know, if you picked it up for 15, 20 bucks, it's okay. If you love Tony Hawk 1 through 4, I think you're just going to come out disappointed. It's like, you know, it's like trying to go for those low-cal or low-sugar foods after you love, you know, those sugary snacks. It's like, it's not good enough. Maybe on its own, as its own individual food, it doesn't taste bad. When you compare it to the original, it's just not good enough, you know? And at the end of the day, that's just the bottom line of it. But either way, that's Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5. If you're still interested in the game, it will be linked in the description for you to purchase or just to check out. But either way, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, share with your friends and family, and comment in the comment section below. What do you think about the new Tony Hawk game? I would love to know your opinion. But either way, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.